Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna be doing a review of the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. I did originally wanna do an unboxing for this mouse as well, but I just kept putting it off for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna quickly break it down for you guys. And if you do like unboxing videos, please let me know down in the comments down below and I will make sure to start doing them more consistently when I get new products. So let's go ahead and get into the unboxing experience. So it is absolutely incredible. It feels so premium unboxing it. For a sub $100 mouse, this is, I think it's $94 or $95. It feels like I'm getting a $300 pair of IEMs. Like it, it feels very similar to my Moondrop Blessing 2 unboxing experience. And those are $340, I believe. So overall, just a really premium feel to the unboxing. When you open it, you're greeted by this wave art and it, it feels like it's a hard cover of a book or something. It's just, it feels crazy. It feels like I'm unboxing a watch or something. So you open it up, you get the dots, you get the extra skates, which I've already used. I'll explain that more later. You get the grips, which are very high quality. I do think I am gonna give these a try later today, actually. And you get your manual and you also get a carrying case for your Lambzu. I have no idea what I did with it. I threw it in a drawer somewhere or my puppy took it. I have no idea what I did with it but that's always nice to get in the box. On this side, it was just the mouse and the receiver, but the receiver you do get is absolutely insane looking, the uh, dongle, I mean. Um, it looks like a piece of art. This looks absolutely incredible, honestly. Out of every dongle that I've ever seen for any product, really, this is easily like the coolest one I have seen. I absolutely love it. The cable is also relatively good quality. It's not too flexible. I can't really get it to bend the other way, which is, not the best but it's definitely not the worst cable i've ever gotten from a wireless mouse um they, they do add the little um bend right here so you don't get any mouse drag or mouse cable drag from the front of the mouse which is very nice to have as well if you do have to play it wired this mouse battery life is also very good it's only died on me once in three weeks and that was because i literally hadn't charged it since i had gotten it so let's go ahead and get into the quality so when I first got this mouse, my main concern was the bottom and how actual high quality it is. Usually when I see translucent material, I assume that it's going to be this cheap feeling plastic, but this honestly feels very high quality. I barely get any flexing anywhere on the bottom of the mouse, which is honestly pretty rare for mice that have like no bottom like this. There's a lot more flexing on the HTS and the HTX bottom than there is on the um, Lamzu Atlantis. My other concern was the scroll wheel because again, that translucent material, I, for whatever reason in my brain, always relate that to cheap. I don't know if that's the same for you guys, but I typically always relate it to cheap. Um, but this feels very high quality. It feels very grippy. My finger doesn't really slide off of it at all. The scroll is a good combination between tactile and smooth. It, Feels pretty similar to the G Pro Super Light, honestly. Um, maybe a little bit smoother than the G Pro Super Light. My only complaint with the scroll wheel is how hard it is to click down, which isn't really a complaint for me because I never really play games or bind anything to scroll wheel. So to me, that's not an issue, but that is something to note. The side buttons feel really snappy, really tactile, not mushy at all. If you press down a little bit too hard, they do not get stuck at all and they pop right back out, which is really nice. Um, this one, mouse button five is ever so slightly more mushier than mouse button four for me, but honestly, you would never really notice the difference in game. Mouse one and mouse two feel very clicky, very spammable. There's very little wobble, very little post and pre-travel as well. There's a little bit of pre-travel, which is fine to me. I don't really mind pre and post travel on my, on mouse buttons, especially if, um, they're spammable like these ones are yeah no side flex really anywhere oh one thing i did note one thing to note is that there is for me at least side flex right here right where my thumb is if i go ever so slightly higher there's no side flex if i go ever so slightly more to the right none ever so slightly more to the left none it's just this specific spot right here where there's side flexing and a little bit of creaking which to me is not an issue because unless you have very large hands your thumb is just never going to touch right there um, for me, I pretty much always rest my thumb right here. So it's just never going to be an issue for me. It's just something to note if you absolutely hate side flexing or creaking, or if you have large hands, it might be something you have to deal with if this is a more copy to copy basis. This is also the first batch of Lambzu Atlantis minis. So they probably have already fixed that by now as well. 
Now, onto the skates. The skates, these are not the default skates, but these skates did come with the mouse. The default skates had four corners and were honestly the best out of box skate of skates I've ever had, honestly. And even these, these are absolutely insane. The reason I switched to the bigger skates was because I made the sky pad and on the corner skates, it just felt too smooth and too fast and I couldn't control it well enough. But on every other pad that I used, I used the Lethal Gaming Gear Pro, the GameSense Radar, the Vaxi PA, the Odin Infinity, and the Artisan Hein. On all of those, they felt very good and very just a great smooth experience, buttery smooth experience. Um, with these, I definitely do get a little bit more control on the sky pad because there's more surface area, therefore there's more friction. And I honestly, they feel exactly the same other than a little bit more friction. And on all the control pads that I use, um, I do prefer the corner skates, but these are just as good, honestly. Um, not just as good, but a little bit less smooth, I would say. But overall, I don't think I would buy secondhand skates from anywhere like normally when i get a new mouse i feel like i have to buy core pads or tiger ices and throw them on like day one but with these i'm honestly just gonna buy skates from lambzoo next time i need skates um because they're just so good and i absolutely love them i might if they ever release the corner skates to buy i definitely will get more of those to try more on the sky pad and see if i like them more when i break them in i didn't really give them a good chance to break it in on the sky pad so if you do main the sky pad or a glass pad, I recommend trying to break them in a little bit before you decide to switch them out like I did. Um, but overall, I do think I like these skates better for a glass pad. Now, let's go ahead and get into the shape. At first, my initial impression was, eh, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna main it over the HTX, which I got basically at the same time. The reason for that is because almost every single mouse that I've used in the past has had relatively flat sides, the HTX being one of them, the Pulsar X2 Mini, the G Pro Super Light has more defined grooves than those two mice, but still relatively smooth. So for the most part, I basically just used flat sided mice. So when I first got this, it was a little bit, it felt a little bit aggressive to me. The only other mouse that I've used that has felt like it's had aggressive sides to me is the HTS Plus. And even then, the sides aren't really that aggressive. It's just really in one spot that it's indented. Whereas on the Lamzu, it's almost like the whole side, starting from mouse button four, it just kind of like dips into the mouse. I know it's really hard to see over video, but it just kind of dips into the mouse gradually. And the more I've used it, the more I've realized that I actually do really, really enjoy that. The other complaint that I had off the rip, which I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this, typically on my smaller mice, they're much skinnier. The Lamzu Atlantis is honestly pretty wide. And for me, at first, I didn't really realize this. I've never measured my hands or never really like looked at my hands in that sense, but my hands are a lot more wide than they are like long. So for me, a wider mouse is honestly really good because I get a little bit more stability. Typically, when I have a mouse and I need more stability, I have to press it down really hard into my pad. But with my grip, this mouse actually works really well. I play relaxed claw and sometimes even finger tipping for micro adjustments as well. Whenever I have to be more stable with this mouse, all I have to do is tuck it into my palm and it honestly fills out my palm perfectly with how the hump is and with how wide it is. And that right there just gives me enough stability. I don't have to press down on my desk and create more tension, which is just really, really nice for me. It makes my tracking feel a lot more smooth on longer tracking. So I really enjoy the shape. The more I've used it, the more I just haven't wanted to take this mouse off my desk because I, I just, I'm in love with the shape, honestly. It's probably my favorite shape out of any mouse that I've ever used other than maybe the HTS. I might still like this shape more, but overall, I do think I am going to end up maining this mouse just because of the shape and how good the performance is in game. And now that brings me to the next topic, performance. The sensor, there's no performance issues. Honestly, it feels very smooth tracking, very smooth flicking. The stability is very good. No issues at all. No jittering or anything on the mouse cursor. It feels very good. I honestly feel like with this mouse, out of every small mouse that I've used, the only mouse that I have better aim on is the G Pro Super Light. And the only reason I have better aim on that is because I have so many hours on aim training, probably like 800 hours aim training with the G Pro Super Light, probably about 2000 hours on Apex alone with the G Pro Super Light. And I don't even think I have 200 hours with any other mouse on any game or aim trainer at all. So that is the only reason I think my aim is worse on the Lamzu than the G Pro Super Light. 
um but i think if i aim train a lot with it i do think this mouse will be my best aiming mouse for sure okay so overall consensus consensus this is my number one pick for 2023 so far and i don't even think it's close i do have the vaxi xe wireless coming in on monday that is a heavier mouse and it's also a larger mouse. Typically, I don't enjoy larger mouse mice, but I've never used a Zowie mouse. I've never used a Vaxi mouse, so I definitely wanted to give it a try. And I, the last time I used a mouse even close to that heavy was the original G Pro. Um, so I haven't used a mouse that heavy in a while. So I'm curious to see if I do get more stability with it. But I will update you guys with that when I do a review of the Vaxi XE wireless. I prefer this mouse over the HTX, by the way. A lot of people were asking me during the HTX video if I like the Lamzu or the HTX better. I definitely do prefer the Lamzu Atlantis Mini just because the shape just feels so comfortable and so stable for me. On the HTX, however, I think this is a much better fingertip mouse and it's just a lot more fun to use just because it is 39 grams and on the skypad it literally feels like i'm using no mouse whatsoever just because it's so light and uh it's just it's just a very fun mouse to use but overall i definitely get better performance out of this and better gameplay and for the price i would definitely recommend the lamzu atlantis mini over the htx if you are however more of a fingertip user i would recommend the htx or something like the pulsar x2 mini over the lamzu atlantis mini if you have medium to larger hands fingertipping i don't think on this mouse would be an issue whatsoever i think claw relaxed claw is this is going to be the best shape for any small mouse that you're going to use in my opinion and like i was saying for the price i wouldn't even recommend any other mouse other than maybe the pulsar x2 or the ninjutsu sora which i haven't used but i've only heard great things about it and the good thing about those three mice the the lamzu atlantis mini the pulsar x2 and the ninjutsu sora is they are very different shapes so you're going to get a very different feeling out of each one so it really just comes down to me like what kind of shape you prefer and if you're really not sure what shape you prefer i definitely think the lamzu atlantis is going to be the safest bet because i think it just fits more grip styles compared to the pulsar x2 mini and the sora that being said like i said i did have not used the sora so i can't speak on that too much but based off reviews that i've watched i would assume that this is going to be a more universal shape for more people but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i love this mouse I cannot recommend it enough. I highly recommend you pick it up if you're considering it. And yeah, let's go ahead and end the video there. Drop a like if you enjoyed it and if it was helpful. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. I'll see y'all later. Peace.